Welcome back to the Commodore 64 Basic Series. This is Retro Game Coders and I am your host, Chris Garrett. In this episode, we're going to look at the magic of pokes. More specifically, how using Poke and Peek you can get the most out of the unique abilities of the Commodore 64, rather than stick to generic basic commands that are common across most machines of the era. Now, this is not to knock the excellent typing programs from Usborne and other publishers like them. They did a remarkable job creating basic games that were both fun and also worked on a multitude of systems. The problem they had is they often had to limit the games to what was possible on the lowest common denominator something that is not a constraint for us. Stay tuned for scenes from the next episode. So what is a poke? Pokes are about putting things into memory locations. Pokes became synonymous with cheating with games because pokes were a way to change how many lives you got, give yourself infinite lives, allow yourself to walk through walls, change levels, and so on. And we could change those memory locations and get ahead in the game. Cartridges such as the Action Replay allowed you to manipulate the game in memory. And other cartridges supposedly were for things like speeding up game loading, also had this ability. To complement poke we had peak. We can look at memory locations. We can ask the Commodore 64 what is the value of a certain memory location. And we can also use the data command to load lists of data items. Like most other home computers, the Commodore 64 is small and very agile. Unlike most other home computers, it has an enormous 64K memory. You'll actually find most of the things in the Commodore 64 actually requires to use Poke because while there's a lot you can do with BASIC on the Commodore 64, the language is actually quite limited versus other computers of the era, such as the BBC Micro. Having access to Poke means you've got access to the entire computer. You can change everything from changing the registers, creating sprites, creating music, but also really fundamental things like changing the screen colour. Everything requires you to poke something into memory at some point. We need to look at different poke addresses, memory addresses that do different things. The last thing we need to look at is how these things work in terms of math with decimals and binary. The first pokes people come across on the Commodore 64 are the colour pokes. As you can see we've got on screen here, 53281 is the memory location of the screen colour. So I've just changed the screen colour to white, can change it to black and so on. And we can also change the border colour with 53280. So if change it to black with zero, we can change it to white and we can change it to blue. So we've got blue background and blue border colour. And we can change the text colour. And as you can see, it doesn't change the existing text color, just the new text color. So if I change it to black, it makes ready black, change it to white, it makes ready white. So they're useful. It's a little bit strange if you're used to other basics. We can just change the colors using basic commands, but this is what we've got. And this introduces you to the idea of poke. Now, as well as poke, we did talk about peak. So what we can do is we can print peak and then the memory location, and that tells us the current text color. If I change it to zero and then do print peak, it tells us zero. Poke puts a value into memory, peak has a look at memory to see what's already there. So in this basic program, we can cycle through all the colors. Basic is fast enough that as it changes the colors in quick succession, it's fast enough to beat the screen update. So it appears like we've got bars of color across the screen. And this takes it one step further and uses all the colors for the text, the background and the border. And it actually checks the screen raster line location to make sure that the screen isn't mid update before changing. We do wait V comma R. We're waiting for the video address to be at scan line 128 before updating. What else can we do with pokes? Before, if you recall, we were having to use the control codes to update where we wanted the cursor to be on screen. So we were using things like home and down, left and right. And you can output a carriage return, a return key using chr$chrstring13. There is a poke for choosing the row and 
second column for the cursor. And that introduces sys, which allows us to call a machine code routine in memory and then return back from it. So it's like a go sub, but a go sub to a machine code routine rather than a basic subroutine. So this is at location 8, 8, and this is location 10, 10. And as you can see, the 8, 8 is using the down, whereas the location 10 across 10 down is set using this routine, which puts the row and column into memory and then calls the operating system routine to move the cursor. In theory, that should be faster. So here I'm using built-in timer, and then I'm outputting to the screen a full screen of text in different methods. Screen memory starts at 1024, and so if I put in a value into location 1024, it'll actually put that on screen. And then compare how fast it is when I poke the character to the screen location instead of using print. Then we see if it's faster to use variables. Then we use a concatenated version, so it's just one command with these repeated, and then we see which is the fastest. So this is the print, next is the poke, and as you can see, printing the full line or the concatenated version is much faster. The poke's slightly faster than the print, but doing a full line at a time is a lot faster. And that makes sense because even though we're using poke, we're still having to do each character individually. Unfortunately, there's no way of poking the entire screen memory all at once outside of using assembler. We can only address individual bytes one at a time. What else can we do with poke? Well, a really cool thing we can do is change the character set of the Commodore 64. I've got a little program here that allows us to look at the data of the character set that's existing in memory. So if I put in screen code zero, it'll actually draw out the character zero, which is the at symbol. And then we've got the A. And as you can see, they're made up of individual pixels. So what this does is it tells the Commodore 64 that we want to read that area of memory. And first it has to turn off the keyboard and input and output because we can't address those areas of memory while they're being updated. Then we get the character data and as you can see the data is 8 bytes, 1 byte per row. So that's 8 bits times 8. Then we turn the I.O. back on and we can output those bits. And like I said earlier, this means us actually going through the binary data that we get back. And the way we do that is with this little bit of math. We say if the current byte and 2 to the power of the pixel, then we output it. Otherwise, we output a space. 255 has all of the bits set. 128 has half the bit set. 127 has the other half of the bit set. And 63 will have the bottom set. As well as looking at the existing font in memory, we can actually change it. So this is a slow program can load the data from the current font and customize some of the characters. From 0 to 255, we get the existing character from memory and we place it into a different part of memory. Again, we have to turn the I.O. and the keyboard off and back on so that we can actually address that area of memory. And then what we do is we have to tell the Commodore 64 where to find the character set. And the way we do that is by changing the bit pattern that is already there. And then we can use a new command called read. And what read does is it actually reads data. It reads the data from data statements. And as you can see here, we've got eight bytes for each of character 0, 60, 61, 62, and 64. So I'm changing just those characters. They're essentially three characters that I can change without caring about them too much. So for each one, we have eight bits set as a decimal number from 0 to 255 that tells the Commodore 64 where the pixels are on those rows like we just looked at. Read will read consecutively from these data statements and the data statements can be anywhere in the basic program so I've put them at the end. Every time you do a read it'll read another value from the list and it'll move the pointer to the next item in the list for the next read. So for each character we have to read eight times and we've got several characters so it has to do the same for each one. So for the sake of this video, I'll speed up and cut to where the character set is loaded. And there's a new character set. So what if we only change the characters that we really need? If we only limit it to the precise characters that we want to change, then we don't have to do as much reading from memory. So here I have the new game example where I'm only changing a set number of characters and I'm not reading the existing characters into memory first. 
Again, it takes a little while, but not as long as the last example. In this example, we check to see if we should be able to move into the space and we're erasing the trail so it looks like a character moving around instead of creating a snake. 